Hey guys, welcome to my October faves. It's that time of the month again and I am only a few days behind. It's been a bit of a weird month and because this is my favourites, I try not to go into anything too deeply but it is a good place for me to share a bit each month because I appreciate I'm not always putting videos out there where I discuss any other aspects of my life that's something that more stays on Instagram however I always love to hear from everyone else about what they've been up to and I think that for me October was quite an introverted month there was a lot of disappointing unsettling news my my health conditions are an ongoing concern i've been discharged from another area of the hospital and now i'm being re-referred or referred or whatever which is going to take months the last referral took about eight months for um, a neurological route now because pain management couldn't and wouldn't help me um, and it's kind of just been a frustrating month however I did channel what I was feeling into a really fantastic Instagram challenge and I thought that it would be nice because sometimes the challenges are part of my favourite things and otherwise this video would be quite short <laughs> The lovely Kim of Heartland Magic, so that's her Instagram tag, and I'll share all the information below, run a nine day shadow challenge. Now nine days just felt so much more approachable right now than doing a shadow challenge for say 31 days straight. And I was already doing um, another challenge. And I did this shadow challenge based around the health and emotional stuff that I've got going on at the moment and it was just really cathartic really therapeutic really insightful and more than anything a really good release I really really love Kim and her essence and her page anyway so that really was one of my absolute favorite things about the month the other really awesome thing about October obviously is Samhain and Halloween I hope you all had a totally awesome time here's my little nod to it because my I did have a larger pumpkin and on Halloween I go to my dad and my stepmums and see my younger brothers and he carved the pumpkin that I brought and his pumpkin and we really went wild for it. I mean, if you've been on my Instagram, then you probably caught some of the live video I did of our house set up. And yeah, Halloween was super fun. One of the other challenges that I really, really loved this month was Embrace the Magical with the lovely Patrick and Kelly. It was just so much fun. It's my first time ever doing a challenge where it was a one word prompt. And whilst it was challenging, it was really freeing as well. It's such a hard experience to explain. Some days I'd sit there and look at it and I'd just be seeing the word as a very, you know, obvious that is the interpretation for it. And other days I'd go into this wild how I associated it. That's probably more to do with my state of mind as well and feeling a bit blocked in the month of October. But that challenge was just superbly fun and I'm really grateful that they did it. I'll be looking forward to it again next year. That leads me nicely into my decks. My decks this month, very, very small amount of decks. Due to Embrace the Magical and Halloween, I predominantly worked with the Raven's Prophecy Tarot. Not that I felt I couldn't work with others, I thought I would work with my Deviant Moon more, but this deck was much newer to me and the experience that I've had with it has just been overwhelming, but in a really good way. It's been really visceral. The messages that have come out for me from this deck 
I, it must just be the connection I'm having with the artwork because I really feel like there's a different layer that's been added to the way the way that I'm receiving messages, the way that I'm reading messages with this deck. I absolutely love the artwork. There's not a card in this whole entire deck that I don't enjoy. Um, it's really powerful and I am still struggling to be able to explain it enough because for me this is definitely one of my decks that surprised me. I saw it about a year ago, maybe more, and couldn't understand all of the hands and where were the people and it's been really interesting because there's definitely been a shift in what I'm finding moves me and brings me messages and this deck straight from the get-go I think I had it about maybe a week and a dear friend of mine came round and I did her a three card reading the messages straight out I did go to the book because it's on her wish list and I wanted her to get an idea of the book but I read for her first and then I went to the book and I was like yep not only <laughs> not only did I feel like it was completely on point, I really noticed that I felt like the book hadn't added anything to the reading that I had done in particular, which was a really, really nice feeling. I don't want to waffle too much about them, but it's definitely not just a Halloween deck. It's more the colouring than anything else. And it's a deck that I will continue to work with. It's very much jumped up into my top five. It's, it's up there with my Medicine Woman and my Wild Unknown. And by now you guys probably know how much those decks mean to me. This is another one. It's just soared in a month. And it made for some really fun pictures as well. That takes me into the next deck, which you guys probably know this was coming up. I know that a lot of people have used this, lots and lots, because it was the right month for it. But again, this was this was my first year using this deck at Halloween, the lovely Halloween Oracle. I know people aren't keen on these backs, and I totally get it because they're quite kitschy. I really enjoy them. It doesn't bother me personally at all. This was another one that was incredibly fun to get to know. For me, it doesn't feel like it's just a Halloween deck at all. There's about three cards, I'd say, are very specific to Halloween, trick or treat. But I will definitely be using it throughout the year, especially going into winter, Maybe not so much for uh, summer and spring, but we'll see. I love that they've got these little guiding messages underneath the words. But I'm not... I don't feel that I'm hindered by that at all. I'm finding that the messages are coming through really well. And the book is actually quite fun. I have read the book to get to know the cards. The book more concentrates on... The background or the meaning of why the the card was chosen and then it gives you the divination meaning in a paragraph at the end however I, I like that I think that it's quite freeing <clears throat> sorry as you can hear my throat has been on and off this month I'm gonna roll with it because no one's videos are perfect and I really don't want to record again it's just been really fun and as you can hopefully see these decks play absolutely fantastically together. If you follow me on Instagram you will know that I have been going all out for trying to magic and Halloween up my Instagram pictures. Part of that has been, and I haven't got a lot of this because it's still on my altar, this fake cobwebbing which looks a lot better. This is just a, a bedraggled bit. And these spiders and my little munchkin. And I went outside into the garden 
and collected up all these gorgeous fall coloured leaves in red and orange and brown hues which I've got in I've actually got it in my gathering bag which came with one of my witch caskets and I didn't think I'd use this bag and you're not going to be able to see it very well but all of my leaves are in here and I've I've been having so much fun creating the pictures. I'm a very creative person. I've been struggling to do art at the moment still. And this is really another way of me creating. I enjoy doing my Instagram pictures as much as I enjoy reading for myself and others. It's been so fun. <laughs> they predominantly are the only decks that I heavily worked with that were my favourites for the month. I do feel, however, it was worth mentioning the Medicine Woman Tarot, my gorgeous soul deck. The reason that I'm mentioning this is because I still worked with this deck quite a lot this month. Sorry, it was still in the box. Because most of you will have seen by now that I've posted the longest review in the world. <laughs> It took ages to review both the book and the deck in in a kind of not just a flick through but a proper in-depth review. This is a deck that I've had for so many years I really wanted to do it justice and I won't spend a long time flicking through it because you'll be able to go on my video and see more but because I wanted to review it in such a deep capacity it meant spending a lot of time with this deck in the background of what I was doing it, taking it everywhere with me, looking through it. More so, I know the deck inside out, but it was more so spending time with the book. The book is new to me in the last sort of year and a half, I think, and I read the book front to back <laughs> so that I could do a good review and that has meant spending a lot of time with it this month and that definitely earns a place on my favourites for sure. That's it for the card decks that I've worked with because as I say it was I was very focused this month on some of the challenges and enjoying the Halloween readings and I did Halloween readings for others as well and just taking fun pictures and allowing myself to do the shadow work. The rest of the stuff I'm going to show you is still mostly in line with esoteric or whatever you want to call it. This, which you'll have seen in the corner, is my gorgeous crystal grid. And this is from the lovely Copper Moon. Her name's Kate. This has definitely been a favourite this month. As you can see at the moment, I've only got one set of crystals that I've been using on it still. This is um, for abundance and prosperity, but I'm really enjoying it. I find myself often quite drawn to it. It's always on the table when I'm doing my card readings. It gets in my pictures. I just think it's completely stunning and I love the energy that's coming off of the crystals and feel like it's something that... I probably won't choose to change the crystals on this for um, a long time. It feels like it's serving a good purpose at the moment and that's something that I'm very happy with but how beautiful is that? This is my little Yankee candle and to be honest with you the reason this is out is because it's been the candle that I've burned all month long but I don't know what smell it is because I've had it so long yeah, it's just it just smells candly now. Which in fairness to Yankee candles, this is probably four or five years old. Um and I never really burned it until the last year. And it doesn't burn for very long periods, but it has been, it felt nice to have an orangey candle. I've just added a black one to my collection as well. I think this would have been cinnamon. If you ever see any Yankee candles, especially the small ones, they often do them for sale, smell the cinnamon. It's amazing. It's so spicy. One of the other things I've been really drawn to, and I'm going to try and move it 
just so you can see that there's no better view I can give you this weighs an absolute ton this is my salt lamp if you watch my live videos on Instagram you can light it up quickly oh, the energy that comes off of this lamp honestly for real it is amazing I've managed to make myself more of an altar like setup on the table now with everything because my altar my main altar I can't actually sit at it it's on a tall cupboard and the cat toy is next to it and this has been the center of of all of the energy and yes it's in the background of my Instagram lives I've really enjoyed going live on Instagram I know many of you guys go live on YouTube I've been in two minds about it because I don't film myself my face isn't in view and I'm not really sure that would be reciprocated the same way in the YouTube community as it would be in the Instagram community also there's I'm not the biggest YouTuber in the world and what I mean by biggest is I haven't been doing it very long and I'm not I don't have as large a following I've been on Instagram a lot longer the Instagram community at least from my experience there's been a lot less trolling and issues like that so going live on Instagram has felt safer um, not that I would feel unsafe but you know it's not like I would have anyone helping me checking out for trolls I don't even know if anyone would watch me live on YouTube but I've really been joining them on Instagram and for anyone who's jumped in on them I thank you sometimes they're focused and I talk about things like this month well the month of October when I say this month myself and a friend Nessa created our first ever tarot challenge tag for Instagram which is running this month you're more than welcome to join in even though it's already a couple of days into November it's called get to know view creating that was so much fun and people have joined in which I'm just still gobsmacked about it's really fun getting to know everyone and it's really chilled out as well so you don't have to join in on every day but that's something that I might go on and do a focused live about other times I've jumped on seen if anyone's around I'm very isolated at the moment trying to create my business which means temporarily I'm out of work and because of my health and things like that I don't get out and see people anywhere near like what I used to and having the Instagram community and getting to engage with people on the lives really brings that social engagement and interaction and pulls me a little bit out of that being introverted that's been really fun I felt like I broke Instagram I didn't know there was a time limit for doing lives there is a time limit I don't know if it's an hour or two hours I can't remember but I was on there so long and I ended up doing live readings for people which I have never done before they were only small one card energy readings but it was really really fun it was very well received to the point where the live cut me off and I come back on and carried on so that was really fun that community stuff has been one of the best parts of October whilst I appreciate it doesn't make for a very good video um, I did want to come on and acknowledge that the last few bits that I've been using my scent as it were for this month is Palo Santo and the reason that I was most surprised I did a reading and I was really called to burn this and prior to that I've been a white sage girl I still am but I really wasn't enjoying the smell of this for whatever reason and I did a reading for someone else and was called to burn it for theirs it turned out that they said to me it's their favorite smell and they don't like white sage at all and I was like yes I'm always so psyched when something that synchronistic happens but since I've been really really fond of it and so it's something that I've been using a lot this month in particular I don't really know what that means to me other than I just haven't been drawn to the sage at all this month this has felt very 
very clearing and cleansing that's been lovely I've been also sniffing this to me and I can't remember what the smells are this was one of the items from a witch casket a few months ago also I'm sorry you guys I know everyone was asking where's your witch casket unboxing I, I just can't afford it at the moment hence I didn't get it for the month of October but there are some fantastic people who are still doing unboxings of them so go and check them out it's a very popular casket this came in it I wasn't smelling it because it says anti-anxiety I've been smelling it for me I guess it's very relaxing and that, that fits with anti-anxiety it smells like lavender predominantly so lavender salts you can put them in your bath as well but I've quite been enjoying just taking a sniff of them maybe before I do a reading or if I'm feeling like I need to take a moment I'm feeling like there's potentially more than lavender in there maybe chamomile or something like that but I can't even remember it smells amazing I'm sorry that I can't share the smell with you here are the gorgeous hearts that I have been I'm clearly feeling like I need to give love to myself this month because I've had these babies around lots also this one but because it's not I don't ever hold this it's um it's made out of stone and someone was asking me where it's from and I think this one was from Glastonbury but you can get them all over the internet because it's not um a crystal or I'm not aware of what specific stone it is I don't ever find myself holding it but between this and these two which I do hold this again, this was a worry stone that came with the witch casket. I have no idea what it's made from, but I do find myself holding on to it or having it around me before I do readings. And the same with this lovely little rose quartz, which many of you will know I've got a large one of these, but this is... Oh, this is nearly broken. Um, no, this is much more easier to carry around with me and usually it's the companion for my wooden tarot but it's not been with them this month it's been with me on to the last two bits and then that's me done I came down with the most amazing cold I we couldn't work out in the end if it was the flu it certainly seemed like the flu when my partner got it <laughs> and I'd been telling him I'd been feeling poorly for like days and when he got it he was like I didn't realise you'd been feeling this bad but whatever it was it needed shifting I generally try and avoid I'm already on pain medication I don't like to put too many chemicals into my body and I'm a big tea drinker I found this gorgeous immune support yogi tea. Most of you will know that I love yogi tea because it's really, really tasty. It's very, um, if you're going to buy tea that's not loose leaf, this is definitely one I'd recommend. And I love their little quotes and things that they've got on the little tags. But this has got a really interesting blend and it's for immune support. I often take Echinacea Pure when I'm run down. This was just a nice little boost, but it really did feel like when I started drinking this that the, I don't know, between the warm soothing of drinking teas and the fact that I was actually getting some of this stuff in my body did seem to help shift it faster. It was lingering before that. Lastly, just a silly little thing to add. It's kind of silly to everyone else, but it's super exciting for me. This Mr. Organic Dairy Free Chocolate and Hazelnut Spread. This tastes better than Nutella. You heard me, better. Um, this is really exciting because uh, there's a lot of things that I can't eat. 
Most of them are due to my endometriosis. There's an endometriosis diet that is useful to stick to because if you don't, it flares it up. I've got IBS as well and I've got a gluten intolerance. So I'm rocking the intolerances hardcore. Also, if anyone ever wants to know anything about endometriosis, if you suffer and you want to have a chat about it, do let me know. Um, or, or IBS, or I've also got polycystic ovaries. I don't talk about it too much on here, but I'm more than happy to be someone who is a sounding board if you've, you know, you've just found out that you've got it, etc. and so forth. I'll help where I can. When there's so many things that you can't eat, and one of the other things, I, I'm not supposed to eat dairy. I cannot eat gluten and wheat at all. Um, dairy makes me ill, but gluten and wheat is the worst. And also soya, can you believe it? Soya makes me ill. 99% of the time, if something hasn't got dairy in it, it's replaced with soya instead. The coconut replacements are really hit and miss. They have just started to roll them out a bit more. The milks are amazing. In my opinion, the cheeses taste like feet. <laughs> so this was amazing. This has got no dairy in it. This is gluten free. This is organic. This is soya free. This is f freaking tasty. How cool is that? And it's recyclable, the glass as well. 10 out of 10 for if you still want to eat, you know, Especially if you get cravings like I do at certain times of the month. This bad boy is amazing. I am so happy I found this. It's totally expensive, but it's incredibly worth it. That really is me for the month. The only other thing you may have noticed, and it will probably be more in my next month, is I won a gorgeous, gorgeous Marla. I do want to say that this month... Of October I have been absolutely loving the journal deck podcasts go to my journal deck Marla unboxing and the information for the podcasts are in there they are superb they are fun they come with different themes and focuses and this month particularly I was looking at the birth charts and stuff that was that was good fun <laughs> That's all from me you guys, thank you for listening. I will be trying to play catch up with videos that I need to get up, tags that I want to participate in and also watching you guys. I really struggled in October to keep up with everyone's YouTube content, video content and I am sorry for that. I still love all of you guys but everyone's been super active and as I say I've been focused inwardly about just dealing with difficult stuff this month so i will play catch up and people will hear and see more from me in the month of november and until then see you later